Bottom is right there. I'm going to call the public meeting to order, but we can stand and say the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So tonight we have our public hearing for our budget, which will start off our meeting and then we'll go into our regular meeting. So Mrs. Bazinski, the floor is yours. Thank you. So the purpose of our budget hearing annually is to share with the public the work that the administrative team and the Board of Education has completed over the last five, six months to develop next year's budget and explain the details of the budget, what's included in it, and how um, the budget will support our students and instruction into the upcoming school year. So to begin, we will look at our Amherst CSB mission, which drives all of our decisions. Talk about the budget, our proposed, or our projected property tax rate. Uh, we'll explain the contingency budget and give you some information on that as well as what we will be asking of our voters for the budget vote and board member election. So our mission to prepare all students to excel in a dynamic world through the development of their abilities to reason, solve problems, apply knowledge, communicate, and collaborate effectively. That drives every decision and it's at the forefront of everyone's mind when we're making the decisions, not only on where we're gonna put our dollars, but how we're going to staff our programs what programs we're going to add, making sure that we're meeting the needs of all of our students so that they can find success. Uh, we'll start with revenue. Our property tax levy is projected to decrease. It's a tax compliant levy of a negative 0.7%, which it includes a tax base growth factor of 1.0014, so there's very little growth in the town of Amherst. Um, the CPI is capped at 2%, so it was higher than 2% this year, but the tax cap formula um, limits us to a 2%, and we're allowed to include capital exclusions of about $980,000, and that's the difference between voter authorized expenses and state aid that we received to help offset those. Um, we had some large changes in state aid this year. We are projecting just over 22 million in state aid, which also included an increase of $2.8 million in foundation aid for the upcoming school year. Um, the current legislation identifies phasing in foundation aid over a three year span. So next year will be year two of that phase in, which ideally, hopefully, the following year in year three, we would receive another $2.8 million. Um, our building aid on our state aid runs did show an increase of $1.5 million. We were anticipating and expecting that, and that is the building aid that's coming in for the capital project we're just wrapping up now, the 2016 $30 million capital project. <coughs> and additionally, we found out a couple weeks ago that the budget includes an increase of $378,000 for the expansion of our UPK program which allows us to add full day programming. So currently we have half day programming because we wanted to serve the maximum number of students possible, but now we have additional funds will allow us to have a combination of both full day and half day programming to best serve the needs of our families. And um, we're working on how that's gonna roll out and what that's gonna look like now. So stay tuned, much more to come in the next couple weeks. While our federal aid is not part of our general fund budget and not part of what we ask our voters to authorize in May, we'd be remiss if we didn't discuss the federal aid that was um, allocated to our district in the last two years. These are a handful of the um, big stimulus dollars that came to our district. The first one is the CARES Act, which was the first stimulus package that was released, and our allocation was 467000 um, that was last year's money and was also a reduction in our state aid that year. So while we had the federal funds, it wasn't an increase to our overall budget. However, all of the other grants were. So we had the CRISA Act, which was number two, which was 2.9 million, ARPA, which was 3.1 million, and then two smaller ones that came in um, most recently, 
the IDEA ARPA grant, which is just over 200,000, which is specifically to support special education programming, and the Homeless Children and Youth grant, which was just over 10,000. It was based on the students identified in our district that have been deemed homeless or are experiencing a homeless situation over the last 12 months, and these are dollars specifically to help them in their continuity of education and any needs that they may have beyond the um, educational setting. Um, our revenue budget does include transfers of reserves of 80,000, 60 from the tax tertiary, and 20,000 from the unemployment reserve. And both of those are offset by expenditure lines that equal. So if we don't end up spending those monies, we won't um, reduce them from the reserve. We have a fund balance allocation of $1 million, which is also equally offset by our contingency line on the expenditure side. And our total allocation of fund balance and reserves, it's actually $1.08 million. So it's $1,080,000, which was a slight increase over the prior year, but it's because we increased our allocation on that contingency line. Overall, we have a revenue budget of $68.3 million, which is an increase over the current year of 6.19%. On the expenditure side, our personnel expenses are increasing just over 5%, which is $1.6 million. And that is attributed to personnel costs, contractual obligations, um, and our substitute costs. On the benefit side, ERS rate is decreased. So we saw savings in our budget there of 222,000, but our TRS rate is increasing and that's a dollar amount increase of 267. And while the ERS is decreasing over 3% and TRS is only going up about a half a percent, we have much, much more in salaries on the TRS side than we do on the ERS side. So that increase in the TRS rate always has a dr dramatic impact on our budget. Health insurance is projected at 7.2 million which is a, um, will result in a 2.9% increase to our overall budget and our premiums for our employees. We're not anticipating any increase in our workers' comp premium. Um, we've made some changes to our 403B contribution, which is a matching benefit that we have for um, many of our employees. And we increased our retirement benefits payment budget by $80,000. And that's just an anticipation of retirement benefits that may or may not be needed next year, but it allows us the room in our budget if we do need to make those payments. General support is increasing 17% or 391,000. We've increased our budgets for our liability insurance premiums, um, significant increases in our utility expenses for natural gas and electric costs. Um, we added funds to our legal fees lines and we restored some previous cuts to our buildings and grounds, contract service lines, and the materials and supply lines. So in prior years, those lines were reduced to help balance our budget. So now we're just trying to get that back up to the level that's really needed. And then on the curriculum budget, we transferred some funds from the professional develop lines up into the contract service line just to help reduce budget transfers during the year. This budget does maintain our capital outlay project, and we'll talk about that a little more in detail in a couple slides. And as I mentioned, we're continuing the contingency line appropriation. Um, it's $1 million. It's fully offset by fund balance, so it has no negative impact on our taxpayers. Our instruction is increasing about 285000 or just over 4-6%. And we're increasing our lines for charter school tuition, special education tuition, and contract services for special education, um, health service payments, which are payments we make to other public schools when Amherst residents attend private schools within their district boundaries. Um, we had some budget increases in our athletic department, and we transferred some funds from our BOCI services up into our software lines, or vice versa, software to BOCI. 
Um, it's still going to be software purchases, but we're able to get them through BOCES instead of buying them directly from the vendor, which helps increase our BOCES aid in the following year. Um, there was a decrease in this area because we discontinued the grant writer services that we had subscribed to last year. And in the community education budget, we previously had funds in both salary codes and contract service codes. So we've moved all the contract service money into salary codes, which is more appropriate for independent contractor versus employees. Um, we're treating them as actual employees, not um, independent contractors. Our BOCES budget is increasing about 775000 so it is a large increase, but we do have another IPA technology purchase anticipated for next year, which is part of our long-range plan for maintaining our um, technology hardware and our replacement cycle. Um, we had an increase in CTE enrollment, so Amherst does not limit the number of students who participate in CTE services. So that will fluctuate from year to year based on the interest of our high school students. We did have an increase in special education programming for students attending BOCES programming. Um, we added some PD support and that was through the curriculum um, office. And we increased some funds in the BOCES lines for athletic software and different athletic services. And again, the increase in our BOCES lines helps um, our future revenue budget by increasing our state aid in the area of BOCES revenue. Transportation had a smaller increase of about 2.6%. We are on a extension of our current contract, so we did not go out to bid this year, but we did add additional funds to increase our after school buses at three of our buildings, Middle School, Smallwood, and Windermere which will not only help extracurricular activities at the elementary building, but also will provide additional supports for families when kids need to stay after for any academic needs or additional educational support needs, if the, especially if the parents can't you know, bring, come pick up the kids. So being able to add those services to those buildings um, was helpful to them. And on the debt service, we're increasing about 4.5% or 243,000, and that is in accordance with the bonds that we've closed on over the last few years and was offset by the increase in building aid. For our staffing changes for next year, we had about $200,000 of an increase in um, staffing changes. We did add an art teacher, which will be shared between the middle school and Windermere. We added a position in our grounds department, which was partially offset by some part-time summer work help that we used to hire. We won't hire those um, part-time people now. We'll have a full-time position. Um, we're adding a central registrar, which will support all four buildings. Um, we have funds in the budget to add an ICT teacher, either in Windermere or Smallwood, based on the needs of our elementary students and the caseloads that um, may change over the next handful of months based on students registering or CSC meetings when student services change. We previously had a 0.8 science position in middle school, which we are increasing to a full-time position. We added two coaching stipends in the athletic budget, girls flag football, which was funded through a donation this year and strength and conditioning coach for next year, which will support all of our students, not only athletes, but will be available in the fitness centers in the high school as well next year. Um, in the nursing department, we had two part-time nurses in high school. We're reducing the part-time positions and replacing them with a full-time position, but then we are also maintaining another full-time position, which will be a floating nurse that will assist all four buildings throughout the year next year, not only for absences, but also for any additional testing or COVID needs that might come up as we go through the year. And we previously had three self-contained classrooms in Smallwood, and we are um, collapsing one of those classrooms based on our student enrollment, but all of the employees that were assigned to that classroom are 
um, being reassigned to other positions in the district. So there were no positions that were eliminated. We had six retirements this year. All were teachers. Five were at the high school and one was at the middle school and all positions are being rehired. So all of that combined gives us an expenditure budget of $68.3 million, matching our revenue, so we do have a balanced budget, and it's an increase in expenditures of $6.2 million. So part of the requirements of our budget, we are required to share our budget in different formats. So we just went through different areas of the budget, both on the revenue and expenditure side, but we're also required to break our budget into a tripartite budget and a component budget. So the tripartite budget compares administrative expenses, capital expenses, and program expenses, and then shows the percentage of change and the percentage of the budget for each. The component budget further breaks that down into five categories, general support, instruction, transportation, employee benefits, and debt transfers. And again, breaks it down to show the percent change in each category as well as the percent of the budget in each category. Um, what I always like to see in these breakdowns is the amount of money of our overall budget that we're focusing to program and instruction. So in the top part, it's more than 75% of our budget. That's exactly where we want it to go because it's most directly, most directly affecting our students. And on the component budget, it's 56%. So more than half of it, even when it's broken up into five parts, is going directly to our instruction of our students. Um, our capital outlay project, so our budget does include a $100,000 line for capital outlay, which allows us to do small projects annually and receive building aid the following year. Um, we haven't determined the scope of work yet for that project because we're um, working on different areas for a capital project, so that'll kind of all go together to fit the pieces together. But in the past, we've done sidewalks at element, both elementary buildings, We've done an emergency generator at the middle school, entryways, ramps, and both elevators at the elementaries. So overall, we have a balanced budget of $68.3 million. The long-range um, projections of the 23-24 and 24-25 do show budget deficits, but this is very, very conservative, and we actually keep our revenue somewhat flat in the outgoing years by assuming that there's no increase in foundation aid. So doing this helps give us a better picture of our expenditures and how they're increasing year over year and also shows our reliance on fund bail, or I'm sorry, on state aid increases from year to year. So when we hear that foundation aid is being frozen, we know exactly how that's going to affect us. If we're going to get a 3% increase or a $2.8 million increase because it's being fully funded, this is a very quick way for us to see how that's going to affect our long-range planning. So with a negative tax levy, we would expect our tax rate to go down, and we are expecting that. Um, it's a decrease of about 15 cents per thousand dollars of assessed value. We do not have the updated assessment from the town yet, for the upcoming tax year, so we used last year's assessment. So assuming the assessment stays the same or relatively the same, homeowners should see a reduced tax rate on their bills. So one of the other requirements during budget development is to share with the community what happens in the event that the budget fails. So if we were required to adopt a contingent budget, there are more restrictions on our spending and on our tax levy. So in a contingent budget, we are not allowed to increase our levy more than what it was last year. What's a little bit unique this year is we were projecting a tax decrease. So under a contingent budget, we would actually keep our tax levy at zero, which would be more taxes to our taxpayers than what we are proposing. <laughs> Um, something that wasn't necessarily thought about when the tax cap formula was developed. Um, but with that, we are not allowed to 
permit the community to use our facilities without them paying the full operating costs of those facilities. We cannot purchase any new equipment, so any equipment codes that we have in our budget automatically go to zero. Um, no non-essential maintenance can be performed. Um, capital expenditures outside of emergency cannot be performed. So like the capital outlay, we wouldn't be able to do that unless there was an emergency and something failed that would prevent us from delivering instruction. Um, Non-unionized employees are not allowed to receive any increases or raises. Um, and it would result in a decrease in spending of about 570000 when we pull all those things out, but would actually be an increase to our taxpayers because we would actually be have a higher levy than our current budget shows. So it would result in a contingent budget of $67.7 million, which is an increase in spending of $3.4 million, or 5.3% increase. Given the amount of, uh, you know, obviously not everyone votes for our but in favor of our budget each year. Are we communicating this well, or are we planning to? So, when you know a certain population comes in and says, "Hey, no, I don't like any," yeah. they realize that it's going to be an increase. I, I think it could potentially be an increase if it's if if we adopt. So, if the budget fails, the board has a decision to make. Um, there's a re-vote day in June. You can go out to the public with the same budget, and you can go out to the public with a reduced budget, or you can go out to the public with, a con or you can just adopt a contingent budget. So you have three choices. So if the board decided they were going forward with another budget, whether it was the same budget or a decreased budget, and it didn't pass again, then we'd have no choice but to adopt a contingent budget. So in that instance, Yes, voting no for the budget would increase your taxes, which is a very unique situation and doesn't happen very often. Um, we do share this information like in right now. It will be posted on our website and as part of our budget newsletter that goes out to all of our taxpayers. Um, fortunately, our community has been um, very supportive of our budgets in the past. And in the last five years, the budgets have passed between 75 and 85 percent approval rating, which is wonderful. But it is um, a possibility, and it's important that everybody understands what the effects of that will be. So, um, we will ask our voters to approve our spending <coughs> limit. So we provide all of this other information, but the only question as far as the budget that we're really asking the voters for approval on is our spending limit, which is $68.3 million. Um, there are two seats on the board that are up for election, two incumbent candidates, Lori Goldhawk and Dominic Bifalo. And those are three-year terms, which will end in June of 2025. So what are the facts of our budget? Our budget focuses on instruction, health and safety, and supports the social emotional needs of our students, which has been a large focus over the last few years, specifically with the pandemic and the struggles that our students have been facing. Um, all programs, athletics, and extracurriculars remain. Nothing was cut and nothing was reduced. The state's foundation aid increase allows us to propose a balanced budget and maintain a consistent appropriation of reserves. So we didn't need to dive into our reserves in order to balance our budget in order to offer these programs to our families. Um, we were able to do that through the increase in the state foundation aid. Federal stimulus funds are used to increase programming above and beyond our general fund budget to help close learning gaps and further support SEL for our students. The tax levy is compliant with a negative 0.69% decrease, um, which means we do not require a supermajority for approval. We need a simple majority of 50% plus one. And a past budget allows continued usage of our facilities and our grounds by the community without having to impose any additional charges or fees. So please, um, we ask our community to vote, 
Tuesday, May 17th at the high school. I'll be there all day, 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. Um, on the expenditure budget limit and to Board of Education seats. And if anyone is unavailable and will not be in town on that day, they can con contact Mrs. Custody for an absentee ballot. So, with that, at this point, another change from our normal budget presentation. If anyone has any questions, this is an opportunity to ask questions and get immediate answers. So if any of you audience people would like to ask <laughs> questions, you're allowed to at this point. Don't all jump at the chance. <laughs> <laughs> Up until what point can you get absentee ballots? You can get it actually after the day before. Okay. Um, where I would personally deliver it. And then it would have to be returned by 5 o'clock the day of the vote. Okay. Mr. Okay. Mr. Custody, how many absentee ballots are you end up in the year? We um, we get our information from the Board of Elections, and they have a, a list of disabled, permanently disabled, and that's about 270 people. So I end up sending out a, usually 20 above that with people that call in right. or, or contact. And you get a decent rate of return on all those? No. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's, it's minimal. Do you get a better rate of return on the people who actually requested the absentee yes. ballots? Right. All of those will be returned. So the handicap list is generated by Erie County Board of right. Elections. So those automatically go, whether people asked for them or not. The other absentee ballots are by request only. Right. So they made the effort to contact Mrs. Custody, fill out the application, get the ballot. I think those come back. All um, of them come back. Yes. But the handicapped ones just right. automatically go. Any other questions? So that ends the budget hearing, and we can now turn the meeting back over to the President Simon. Great. We will move on with our regular uh, meeting. Um, we do have uh, someone who signed up wishing to speak. Uh, Ms. Ada Wolfinger, is that? Wolfinger. Yes. From 333 uh, Headstrong. Yes. You have three minutes. Thank you. Um, I, after that presentation, I just want to thank the board for their continued support of educating our whole children, educating not just the testable little data points that come out of them as they're learning, but also all those areas that make them human and help them integrate um, their, all, all the parts of them. And uh, I'm looking around, I see some really familiar faces. It's good to see you. Welcome back. Um, I'm also a teacher in the district, it's nice to see you. Um, and I just am very proud to have my kids here. I have one in, in first grade at William, uh, Windermere. I have one that's starting pre-K. I'm very excited about full day pre-K. That's a, amazing. <laughs> I'm very excited about that. Um, and I just want to thank you for your commitment um, to keeping our kids whole. Thank you very much. We did receive um, a thank you note that I think I've been passing around um, from the quiz ball team um, as far as written communication. Um, boards and committee, uh, uh, policy committee, Mrs. Errington. Yep, we had a policy meeting last Monday, the 25th. It was actually pretty short. Um, mainly we're just streamlining and making language consistent a lot of policies there's something that had to do with first student it was about the new and um, so it's really one new house is just some minor changes started probably okay. at eight because <laughs> everybody <laughs> <laughs> do we have any other committee or board? no all right well then uh, um I do have a report as well, I guess, then, in terms of the, the majority of the board here did attend um, an event this past week um, celebrating our superintendent who received an awards for excellence. Um, Mrs. Custody is going to give you a little presentation here. That's the award website. 
It is pretty. Yeah. So Mr. Pinnell was honored by the Western New York Education Service Council. It was an, um, an award that the board had nominated him for um, throughout the area and he, he won. Um, we were all, it was a quite an impressive group from Amherst uh, there to celebrate Mr. Pinella between the Board of Education and our esteemed administrative team, like everyone I think was there. <laughs> um, I think we had four tables or so, so it was quite, a, quite an event celebrating him and his achievements. So Mr. Pinella, thank you for everything you do for us. We'd like to give you an opportunity to speak now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we were not given the opportunity to have a speech at that event, but. I'm so, so glad this continues to um, be the focus of things. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not, certainly not one for individual accolades. And as you can tell by how red I am, I did cut the lawn when it was 80 degrees that one Sunday. So I was a little sunburned, but I do turn a little red when I get the attention put on me because, you know, it really is a team effort. And I love that picture of everybody there. But there's two things that make this very meaningful to me. Um, one is the nomination came from the board and you know a cohesive governance team starts here at the top and your support means a lot and it allows us as a district to move forward in a you know professional productive manner so that means a lot to have your support and your, your nomination the second thing is the the team i think looking at that picture you can see that we're a collaborative cohesive team we work very well together. Um, we've been able to accomplish a lot of uh, things we probably th we thought we wouldn't be able to accomplish, but we were forced to in the last two years. And it's they're a pleasure to work with, and I'm happy to serve the district and the community. So there's very two very meaningful things about this, even though I don't like the personal attention, um, and I don't necessarily feel like I deserve an award, but I'm glad it shines a spotlight on our school district. Well, you did deserve it. And mm -hmm. I think we're very happy about it. Thank you. It was nice to see your wife and daughters there as well, too. Yeah. With that, we can turn over the superintendent's report. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> just leave those pictures up for the rest of them. <laughs> it was quite impressive, though, to see the entire team there, and without you know the good team, you know. Um, Mr. Dzinski and Dr. Shanahan, you know, the administrative support, he wouldn't be where he is. So. Well, there's, um, there's, uh, <laughs> behind every great leader is a great team. So, you know. There's, thank you for that. Um, so this is the time of year where we really have many national recognition days for our employees. So I wanted to take a moment to shine a spotlight on some staff and a student. Um, so I'll start with some staff recognition. Um, on April 27th, it was Administrative Assistant Day, so I know um, Deb got the red carpet treatment from our Board of Education, as well as myself, because we appreciate everything she does, and I know in our district, all of our administrative assistants were honored and recognized for um, really being the, the glue that holds us together, and you know, in many cases, the front line that um, allows us to operate and keep everything moving <coughs> forward. Uh, May 1st, ironically on a Sunday, is School Principals Day. Um, so we had many social media posts, which I hope you saw, with some very good graphics and images honoring our school principals on May 1st. Um, today is National Teacher Appreciation Day, which actually ends up taking on a whole week. Um, similar to my wife's birthday um, and you know we are very thrilled to honor our teachers in all of their hard work especially with what we've been dealing with the last two years 
Um, so we put together a little video message that I'd like to play for you that was sent out to, uh, that I sent out to all of them today. Thank you so much for everything you've taught us. I can't wait to use it in the adult and be full of knowledge. And thank you for giving us the basic skills that will take all throughout our lives. My teacher is great because she always takes our ideas into account and lets us choose what we want to do. My teacher is great because she taught us how to make wind turbines and that they make electrical energy. The person that influenced me the most is my ELA teacher. My ELA teacher has taught me more about literature in the past couple of months than I have learned in the past couple of years. He deepened my love for reading and writing more and more every day. If there's one thing that the music department has taught me throughout the uh, nine years that I've been with it here, um, and a few years before that, starting with guitar, taught me that practice is the most important thing for school. I know it sounds pretty bland, really, really uh, cl cliche, and everybody's like, oh, well, you gotta practice, you gotta practice. But this year, I really understood that practice is the most important, not only for music, but for school, uh, social situations, um, and it basically applies to everything in your life. So, practice doesn't make perfect, but it does make permanent, and if you practice enough, it will make perfect. My teacher is nice to everybody, and when we're doing homework, um, like, it doesn't even, we don't even, like, think that we're doing homework, it's just, we're having fun when we do homework at the same time. And we don't even know. So, the other thing my teachers have taught me over the years that I always remember from high school is that confidence will always bring you higher, because more confidence you have in yourself and just in general, the higher you'll go. Also, if you don't make a mistake, don't worry about it because if you get help from that mistake and learn from it, you're going to go a lot higher and know like, what you did wrong and you're not going to do wrong. I am Joseph Ola, I was in fifth grade, and I'm glad I had my teacher for my last year going to a small drive. She helps us with our homework whenever we need help with it. She helps, she helps if we don't understand something, and she helps. Even if we don't need it, but someone needs that help. And she is the best teacher that I could have had this year, and I'm glad I had her. My teacher are great because they make me happy, and they are very nice. My teachers are great because they always believe me and tell me to try my best. In our business class, we learn a lot of stuff that kids our age usually don't know yet. Uh, we've done basic life skills like we need to have resumes and um, uh, really our real professionals and we how to be most of the best of them. Well, my name is Diane and I'm, and I'm in third grade. I love my teacher because she is the best and she loves me. She helps us every day and she does funny things. She teaches us new things every day, and one time we will be going to my team. Thank you. So I'm very grateful for uh, Lori Sanko for putting that video together for us. Um, she did a wonderful job. I'm not sure how you got that elevator music, but <laughs> I, I hope we have the copyrights to it. Um, the it was a, a very you know uh, appropriate message for today, especially over the last two years. Um, you know, people are finding this year is probably the hardest year of the pandemic and. Teachers' workloads are certainly increasing, and you know they're dealing with things in the classroom and and things that are happening in families that we haven't seen before. And I think the impact they're having on our kids is tremendous. And I'm very thankful for all that they do. Um, 
with our students and every day. I'm also excited because we've got a few other days coming up. Uh, May 6th is School Lunch Hero Day. Um, last year, Tracy Ogilvie purchased shirts for our staff, which you can see in the pictures, that said Heroes Work Here. And this year, she's made corsages and boutonnieres for them. Um, we plan again also to feature the work on social media platforms of our school lunch heroes. And our school nurses have played a vital role in our schools over the last couple years. Um, Ever-changing environment, new, new mandates coming down the pipeline, new tests to stay, tests to go, um, tests to come in, all this, all this stuff with COVID, contact tracing, and they've stepped up every time without ever questioning or pushing back. Yep, we can do that. Yes, we can do that. Um, so our school nurses will be recognized on our social media platforms and um, in our buildings as well on May 11th. And now I get to turn to spotlight one of our students, Jordan Benefield. Um, you know, I've been in public education for 23 years. And when I learned about Jordan's recent um, scholarship award, I was a little bit blown away because I've seen awards from year to year and they're all very prestigious. But this one, I think, um, is up there with the top awards that I've ever seen a student earn. Um, so I'm going to say a little bit about you, Jordan, and embarrass you, but you're covered by that mask so we won't see you <laughs> blushing. Um, and then I'm actually going to give you the opportunity just to say a few words about where this um, honor is going to take you. Okay, so Jordan applied to be a Gates Scholar, which is a very highly competitive scholarship. Um, it's part of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation that's given with the intention of helping student leaders reach their full potential. It's only given to 300 students a year nationwide. She underwent an extensive application process that spanned eight months, and each phase of the process she had to await word to see if she'd be advancing to the next stage or the semifinalist and finalist process. So that's sort of the timeline of when this began. Um, during the essay phase, she had to write four essays, each answering a different question or a different writing prompt. She also had an online interview with a counselor from North Carolina. Um, in addition to the monetary awards, Gates scholars also receive online support services such as academic mentoring from their first to last day of classes in college through graduation and even transition into her career. Um, it's a very exciting opportunity and we're very proud of Jordan's accomplishment. Um, Jordan, I would like you to stand up and maybe say a few words either about the process or um, what you plan to do once you go to UB and what your next steps are. But before you do that, I'd just like to say congratulations. <laughs> Do you have a TikTok of like when you found out you got this or something? No, yeah. unfortunately I don't. It was yeah. kind of me and my mom just in her room. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of a very solitary reaction, but um, not much to say more than what you've already covered. It was a very extensive process. Um, really spanned like eight months. It was very a lot of hard work to do on top of schoolwork that I was also doing for my numerous AP exams and just classes I had to take and preparations for those. But mostly for the future, I am going to um, the University of Buffalo. I decided to stay local just to give back to my community and a community like Amherst that has just really pushed me and gave me so much support throughout the scholarship process and just going through my years of being in high school. So yeah, nuclear medicine technology is also going to be my major. And I hope to pre-med there and possibly <laughs> maybe become a radiologist with a doctorate degree in the future and open up a small clinic in Buffalo and just really keep the love going um, local and give back to the community. So thank you.
proud of you and um, happy to be part of your journey. And you know, I'm glad that you um, were able to get um, so far in the process. I don't know if I mentioned this, but it is a full scholarship. Um, so in addition to the mentoring and you know, from the first day of college through career placement, she is also going to be going to school for free. Yeah. yeah. So, no, so congratulations. <laughs> yeah. You are uh, a shining light. We are so proud of you. Yes, and I'm glad to credit Amherst behind that as well. Thank yes. You. Thank you. Thank Tell you. Bill and Melinda. <laughs> <laughs> I'll mention it to them. Yeah. <laughs> Next time you see them. So that. Um, Awesome. is all I had for the superintendent's report student staff recognition thank you for being here I know you were were you at another award ceremony yes. before you came it was oh. for chemistry Olympiad, but yeah well thank you for <laughs> fitting us in <laughs> on the award <laughs> circuit <laughs> Yeah. We Congratulations. are honored that you come, so thank, thank you, you yeah. so much. Yeah. It was great to hear about your experience. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. Med school for sure. Yeah. You gotta say, yes, I'm going. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to do this. Yeah. He's <laughs> strong. That's right. Thank you. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, yeah. On the new business, feel free you do not have to stay around. <laughs> <laughs> so, not take offense. Yeah, She's got a few things to do. <laughs> yes, they sound like very busy. <laughs> so. Another presentation to go out Thank you for sharing. <laughs> Eight o'clock award? Yeah. <laughs> Good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Much. Oh, that's wonderful. Wow, that's we will need a motion for new business items. I'll make a motion for new business items F1 A through S. 2A, B, D, and E, and 3D. I'll second. And any discussion? I'd like to know what a book vending machine I is. I have that written down. <laughs> I totally want to know. When did we got a book vending machine? That sounds awesome. Right. Yep. <laughs> Just have you seen it? No. Uh, yeah. We're going to have to do a field trip because no. that sounds pretty cool. Yeah, oh. book vending machine. Can you get a picture of that or something? Probably yeah. like Carvana, but different. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sounds awesome. It's definitely All those in favor of new business items F1, A through S, 2, A, B, D, and E, and 3D. Please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 7 0. I'd like to um, congratulate Dr. Shanahan for a near 10 year appointment. Congratulations to you. We are very fortunate to have you. Uh, and also to some new team members, specifically the ones who are in the audience here, obviously. Uh, welcome home, Ms. Doria. And Ms. Gerbeck, welcome back. <laughs> We're happy to have you. I'm so happy to be back. <laughs> We're excited to have you join the team again and join the team officially. <laughs> officially, yes. Do we have any follow up action items, Mrs. Castillo? No. And we will need a motion to convene your executive session. I'll make a motion to convene the executive session regarding the time that we go first. Do we have a second? second. All in favor of commuting to executive session, please say aye. 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 Motion carries 7-0. Thank you everyone for coming.